so, good morning everybody. Um, my name's Oliver Gibson from Northbridge Digital. Uh, that's, company, that's my company and we're a small company and we provide CVCRM and Drupal based services. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Yep. I'm Andy Davidson. I work for the Vegan Society and I'm here as a good example of uh, how to use web forms with Civi integration. That's what we currently use at the moment. Yeah, okay. Um, right. Okay, um, so before we get started, I, wanted to, I did have a few questions for people. So, is anybody here already using Drupal web forms? Quite a large number of people. Okay. So we've we've based this session around the idea that you it's kind of it was perhaps put across slightly wrongly in the in the in the program. We based it around the fact that you probably aren't using them, and we're going to go from a very basic starting point and explain them from the very, very you know first principles and go up from there. So what I'm really, I don't want to waste anybody's time, I suppose. So if you feel that you are the kind of person who could probably already show others how to use web forms with CVCRM, this probably isn't the right session. <laughs> I'm not trying to put anyone off too much. <laughs> oh, obviously we will have time for questions at the end, uh, but it's not like a masterclass. In this, we're assuming that you don't already use them. My second question, and this time I'm not trying to put anybody off, this is more like a genuine question. Um, do, uh, is everyone, the systems you use, you, do you already have CVCRM? Do you use Drupal already? Yeah? Okay, okay. Um, right, so what we're going to cover is we're going to talk about what, what a web form is and how is it used normally outside of CVCRM. Then we're going to discuss how CVCRM uses forms without, without a connection to Drupal. So, and they're called, they're called profiles. So we'll, we'll examine that. And then we're going to look at the differences be, between using profiles in CVCRM and what you, the extra things you get from using Drupal web form. Because there's, there's these two options. So it's worth knowing under what circumstances you would, you would use each one and what's the benefits. Um, then we'll look very quickly at how to install it, and then um, we're going to spend most of our time on this, which is how to create one, how to connect it to the CRM. We'll look at, uh, we'll, we'll create a form, we'll put something into the CRM, and then Andy's going to look at the forms they use, which are quite complicated, and you, you develop them over a long period of time, and they're doing, they're a, good, a great example because they're using all sorts of different bits of this functionality. And if we have more time, I've got some other examples as well. Um, it's not really formal, so if you have any questions, just, just ask. Because chances are, if you're interested in something, everyone else or other people might be interested as well. Okay. Uh, okay, right. So now I'm going to go out of the presentation. It's not lots of slides. We're actually going to look at a system. So, for those of you who don't use web form at all, a web form installs as a module in Drupal. And if you add content to your Drupal site, if I say add content, that lets me create, it brings in this new content type called web form. So what I'm showing you here is, here is just what, a, what web form does not generally without a connection to CVCRM. It won't, it won't take me very long. So I'll call it our test form. And like any other piece of content in Drupal, you could give it its own URL, like a, and um, you could put it in the menus, just, just like a normal page or article. And there it sits. Now, so if I, I can then, it's, it's then, rather than just edit, it also has this extra web form tab. So if I click on that, I can then add some things to our form. 
So I could say, uh, your name is, we could have that as a text field. There's lots of options around layout and is it, is it a mandatory field? And then we have a form which people could complete. And you could put that, depending on how, you, how your permissions were set up in Drupal, you could then put that as a public form. You'd probably add more fields than that. So that's Drupal's, very quickly, that's Drupal's built-in functionality. Now, was it, was it clear how I did that? So I could add, I give it a label, and then I say what type of field it is. So you could have drop down boxes, you could have radio buttons, you can have note boxes, um, you can have general sort of form function. Yeah. Uh, has anyone got any questions at this stage? No? Okay. Um, so with this, once someone's completed the form, nothing really happens. It would go into a results section and someone could come back, a staff member could come back and look at these results and you could see what, what names people had put when they completed these forms. Where it gets more interesting is when you use things like these form settings or emails. So when it connects to CVCRM, these things are still here. So on the email, we could say, I'm going to put in a staff member's name and I want to add something. So when someone completes the form, the system will send an email to that staff member saying someone's completed this form, you should go and have a look at this. Or you could add, see it says component value. If we'd added an email address into that form, you can send a receipt back to the person completing the form. So thanks for completing our form. You might also be interested in X and Y, click here for more information. And if you're thinking about the way that you would want forms to work, that's, that's kind of the kind of things you're looking for, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you've also got something called form settings. So, do we want people, well, after someone's completed the form, do we want them to see a nice message? Or do we want to redirect them to another page? Uh, We've also got this idea of Drupal roles. Is anybody not comfortable with the idea of a Drupal role or what, what that would mean? Okay, so if I go to this website as a, a member of the public, I'm an anonymous user. So that means that anonymous people at the moment can complete this form. But you might have forms which are, for example, you would only want uh, your members to complete. And members might need to log in. So then you might say, well, they're going to be authenticated users. So that means you would untick anonymous and make it so only authenticated people could, could use, could do it. Or when you get more sophisticated than that, you can set it up where you would have certain groups of people in CBCRM. And when someone logs in, the system will check to see if they're in that group. And it's only lets, it only lets them complete it if they're in a particular group. So you can have quite sophisticated systems like that. In these advanced settings, we can have things like uh, progress bars, um, what should it say when it takes you to the next page, should people, if people are logging in and it's a long form, can they save a draft copy, which if it's like an application form you were doing, that's very likely you would want to do that. Uh, we can also, it's something we use a lot. It's a small option down here. It says available as block. So does, does it, should I explain what that means? Yeah, yeah, okay. So in Drupal, you have this idea of, of blocks. So you can say right on the home page, on the inner sidebar, I want to have a news block, or I want to have a block of uh, content that sits somewhere on particular pages. That's what this will do. So it doesn't ha this doesn't have to. This could sit at the bottom of a number of other existing pre-existing pages. 
So you could create a contact form and you could say, I want that block to appear on uh, this page, this page, and this other page. So it gives you a bit of flexibility about where the form might appear. Or it could sit alongside, if it's a small form, it could sit alongside other content. Um, okay. That's the basics of a form. I feel like I've gone over that quite quickly. Is there anything about that that was confusing or you'd like me to cover again? No? So, th in, in essence, this is Drupal's form builder. You can build, you can build nice forms and um, you, can, you, can, you can be informed about who's completing them. And to go in, to go in you would go to this results tab. That's, that's, that's um, outside of CVCRM, that's how this works. We also have these other things going on. I've got um, something called conditionals and form, val form validation turned on. So conditionals, you would say something like, ah, it's, it's about, I, should, if, I should have added more fields to this. But the idea is you would say, if someone answers no to this answer, then show them this other, fi other answer, otherwise hide it. Or uh, if they answer yes to something, take them to this next page. It, it's some kind of logic around there. So, yeah, sure. so you use, we'll look at that later because you use that, don't you? Yeah. 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 Um, and that's kind of, for nice form structures, you know, if you, if you, especially if you've got forms that um, are quite long or you, know, you want lots and lots of people to complete them en masse, to design is crucial. You know, just making something slightly easier affects your percentages uh, greatly, really. Um, there's also this one, this is an extra module, and um, later on I'll look at all the different modules that are available. This is one we use a lot, it's called form validation. So in here, you could say, uh, for example, you could, you could set up a postcode field and you could say um, it, yeah, that, that field can only be so many characters. Or I want to have a text box, but I only want them to be able to put 100 words in. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of idea that you're controlling the form. Um, or we've got an unusual use case coming up where someone needs to select three different charities and give each charity a percentage. And the percentage between the three charities has to equal 100. So they're distributing some money on a, on a form. So we're going to use... Um, adds up to. Which one is it? Adds up to. <coughs> yeah, we're going to use this one called adds up to, and we'll look at the three fields and say, you can't submit this form until those three boxes all equal... One, between those three values, it equals 100. That kind of thing you just can't do in CVCRM alone. That, that, no, that's, this is quite powerful stuff, really. Okay, um, has anyone got any questions? You're very qu quiet. Yeah. Audience, yes, brilliant. Okay. If you have a complex use case that you have yeah. to check certain things, yeah. is it with a Drupal hook? Or oh, you mean yeah. not using this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we tend not to, we tend to try and use these, but you could, you could, I think you could, you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you more likely to want to do it pro just <coughs> programmatically? Just complex things to check before you submit the form. Yeah, I think you could. Yeah, you would. Yeah. And this, is, this, this, this has been around for a number of years. This covers a large number <coughs> of use cases. It's actually a bit of a longer list. To be honest, it's quite, it's quite extensive, the number of controls that you've got around what can be done. Yeah. yeah. The are normal forms as well, so you can use hook form or anything like that as well, so just add kind of normal validation stuff that you would do on, on Drupal forms. Yeah, just do it on submit, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or interact with the same API for while we're doing that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the longer forms, what we're thinking about is what's the user experience? What kind of error messages are they getting? How, how is that? How, we, are we, how are we not putting them off by doing this in some way? How's that working? That's, that's usually where we get the most difficulties rather than the validation itself in some ways. Okay. 
Um, so that's web form itself. Um, I'm now going to show you in CVCRM how CVCRM normally handles forms. Um, do, do you, um, do you, some of you use CVCRM profiles already or know what that phrase means? Yeah? Okay. Um, we'll have a, a quick look. So I've, this is on my, this is on my local install. I've got this Drupal site with CVCRM installed. Um, it's the latest version, and I've got, I've gone into administration, and I've gone to the profiles uh, menu item. So these are the ones that are built into the system. And these profiles are used for a number of things. So if I look at this, look at this name and address profile, you can see it brings up the short form. Now it might be that if you need some, you know, if you've got um, hundreds of things on paper and, and you want a volunteer to type them in, you know, one at a time, or um, you've got a simple, a really simple use case for a form. This is actually fine. Just, you know, we use profiles all the time as, alongside web form. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, so, and obviously, this isn't a session about profiles, but within CVCRM, you have a profile. This one's called name and address. A bit like in the web form you can add fields to it, CVCRM fields. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah? But this is for creating data, not for editing existing records, is that correct? So profiles are used both to edit and, and create data. So if, if I use this name and address profile... Um, but if you're not logged in... If you're not logged in... You're only adding data. If you're using it, you, you can also use something called checksum, which will pre. I'll come back to that. Okay. <laughs> I'll come back to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this looks fine, doesn't it? It's a form. You can imagine as a member of the public or a logged in person. That seems quite straightforward. You could fill it in. Um, the issue with the profiles is that this is what you get. You can't really do anything more complicated than this. The only thing you can do, apart from creating, you can create one contact. You can create, you can put in a, an employer's name. It doesn't let you create multiple contacts. Things like that. Whereas actually, that, in reality, that's probably the kind of things that you, you, you might want to be doing. Um, I've got, <coughs> I'm in for time. Okay. Okay, on my slides, uh, I've got a list here of the differences. And we'll go in and look at these. So as I said, if you're using the, the profiles built into CVCRM, all you can do is create the single contact with, a, the, with their employer on. There's, there's nothing else you can do, really. If you use Drupal web form, you can create multiple people on one form, so you could collect information on, say, a family, and, and you could maybe, in the form, automatically create relationships between uh, spouse to spouse, parent to child, uh, sibling to sibling, and have all that data already set up in your CRM. Someone completes the form, they just put their family details in, but the form will translate that into the CRM and create all these complex relationships for you. Um, you can load Existing contacts, which is what you're talking about. Um, the existing contacts, you can do it in the URL. So uh, you could say, uh, like, the CI, it's, um, it's like question mark CID equals one. Or, no, CID one equals, and someone's ID number. So you can pre-fill the form, you could pre-fill these existing contacts and say the people I want to edit are these people. 
If you're doing simple forms, that's not the kind of thing you're going to be doing. Um, we use it for systems where, say, we say that we have got one with families where I could log in, I could look at my family, I could then go and edit different family members, and the system will do that. The system will pre-fill the form with the right contact. Um, like, we like we talked about, you could use validation and conditionals on the form. Um, and you can also you've got the option to style the web forms in a way that's a bit harder to do with CVCRM profiles. And I kind of because it's a Drupal piece of content, kind of automatically that form that you've created, the, Dru the Drupal web form, should pick up the style of your website anyway, because it's acting as a piece of content. And in fact, if we look at um, <coughs> There's a list here of web form type modules. Now, is everyone comfortable with the idea of modules in Drupal? You can extend Drupal by um, adding add extra modules to Drupal to, to manipulate it and to make it do as a, a website what you want it to do. So in here, there's a huge long list of things that you can do with web form. Some of them affect layout, some affect Validation. It's not saying that all these are used by hundreds and thousands of other people and they're all brilliant because that's not the case. But some will be used in you know in great numbers and will be um, a very useful piece of software. So the I got to that list from the main Drupal web form page. So if you go on, if you're on the Drupal site and you looked at the web form module, you just scroll down the page. It says, um, gives a link to this big long list of things you can do. Or the modules. Um, you can also, and we're going to look at this, you, you, can't, you don't just have to create contacts, you can also push into your CBCRM and sometimes edit um, new activities, cases, grants. Um, on yours, we, we do memberships, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, membership. Memberships and payments as well. Um, so it's it's got it's these are, these are all things you quite you, you can't like this long list here list here you can't do these using profiles in that way. Uh, okay. Right. Um, the next thing on my list is how to install web form integration. Hi, yeah. Question about the uh, web, web form itself. Can you also make like step by step filling? Like for example, you first add, ask the address and then the donation amount and then the bank data. <coughs> like page like page by page? Like they appear. I don't know what you call it. I think that is no Yeah, because it's not there to start with and then it appears after you finish the address field, something else appears. Yeah, you yeah, can do that. Yeah. You can say in the conditionals if address is blank, don't show the rest of the page. And once they start entering it, and it shows the rest. And that gives it up later. Yeah. 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 There's, a, there's a large number of controls you can put onto those forms. So I think it's used by like half a million sites, Drupal web form. It's a really well used and um, extensive feature set, really. Um, uh, did that answer your question? OK, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, We've, I'm assuming that you've got your Drupal site and you've also got CBCRM already installed. So to get web form working, you need um, three different modules. So if we, if we look at the web form CBCRM integration page, this is the main module that you need. It's called web form CBCRM integration. And it 
it. Um, I didn't tell you on here. So let's go to my local install. Wait a second. It, you don't just install that module, you also install two other ones. Uh, one's called libraries, and one's called options elements. So, but it will pro if you try and just install Webform CBCRM, it'll prompt you. It'll say, oh, I need, I need these other two as well. So in my module list, so I've, I've got admin access, I'm in modules, I've got web form CBCRM integration, and it's saying that it needs, oh, actually it needs, does that one options element, that wouldn't, might not be installed, and libraries, and you might need chaos tools and views, but it, it'll prompt you to go, and, to go and collect these modules or install these modules as well. It, on most people's sites, to install the module, on the module page you can say install a new module and it'll, it, will take, it will go through the process with you. Um, if your site's a bit more locked down, that might not be true and you might have to do it through a control panel or through FTP, SFTP or something like that, where you're uploading the files. Um, is that okay? Yeah, I guess. I can't spend too long in this session talking about how to install modules, but, um, okay. <coughs> right. Um, so, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new web form, but this one will actually, be, will actually talk to the CRM. So I'm going to add another piece of content. It's a web form. And this time, I'm going to click on the CVCRM tab. And enable processing. So now, all those kind of familiar CVCRM fields are here it's available. You're not, this time, rather than creating a field one at a time, you actually tick which fields you want to include in the form. Uh, initial, your initial choice is how many contacts am I talking about? So if it was a form where you're collecting information from, say, someone you work with and who they work for, you would want two contacts, which is an, an, in, an individual and an organisation. So then we've got contact one and contact two, and I would say that contact two is the organization. So I could say uh, contact one, I'm going to do first name, last name, I'll put in an address. And we could have a phone number. And for the organization, we'll have the organization name. And we'll call it an existing contact as well. So that's saying, this contact might already exist. We're going to look up in the CRM to check if that contact's already there. Which, if you're doing organizations, quite a likely thing to do. You might, you know, people spell organizations differently. You might want to do that to try and prevent duplicates, for example. Uh, one question. Yeah. For which interpretation rules in this use? Right, so. Um, it will go here it will use the default unsupervised. Yeah. So, Civi has this idea of, um, of rules as to what happens if a, if a member of the public fills in a form, how do we know that that contact already exists or not? And these are called the rules. And the, the, this unsupervised rule, in most cases, for individuals it's setting up, it's doing it against email address and for Organizations, it's doing it on organization name and email address, I think. What does it do for households? Sorry? Households? For households, uh, I use households that little, I can't remember. Actually. I, um, <laughs> I think it's probably on the household name. Yeah. Or email, and email, probably. Oh no, it wouldn't be household name because you could have like the Smith household, couldn't you? It must be the email. 
Yeah. Do you think? Mm. Yeah. Um, so if I save that now, um, it will automatically create. It's put create the form, and it's put all those things I selected as fields into the they call web form um, components. And it set it split it up by contact one and contact two. That seems quite easy. You think? Yeah. This one's we'll look at this one, that's a bit strange, and we'll come back to country as well, I think. Um Normally, if I just fill this in, it's going to then create this con it'll check if this contact exists in the CRM, and it will do the same with this one. And if they don't, it'll create those contacts. At the moment, they're totally separated. There's no relationship between those contacts, it would just push them in. If I put email address on here, then that's going to start doing a duplicate check as well. And so I'm going to make a few changes and just talk you through them. So, um, let's see what's a good way to do this. Right. right, so the country, this, this is the kind of power of using a form like this. The country, I might say that everyone who's completing this form actually lives in my local area. I don't want them to put a country in. But as a CRM, we want them to have a country because then it's going to do the mapping properly and do the geo... Um, get, it'll pick up latitude longitude. So what I can do is we can edit this particular field and hide it from the form but give it a default so that you know that everyone, you know, so it's a hidden field from everyone but we know we're going to get a certain value. So, so I was on web form components, I've gone into country, it has all these different options. And uh, this is the important thing, it's called the widget. So you, you're changing what type of field is appearing on the form. So at the moment it's a select list, but I'm going to change that to be hidden. And I'm going to default it. Um, to the United Kingdom. It's hard to see on here, so basically I was choo I'm choosing a default. That's going to be the selected one. I'll save that. So you can see now on your web form component list that this has become hidden and it's going to be set to the United Kingdom. And that's just better form design, isn't it? and making things slightly easier for people. Um, the other one I was going to change is this one. Uh, it says existing contact, contact autocomplete. Now this is, you do have to be tricky with these forms, especially if you use existing contacts, because you, you could potentially, if someone's choosing from a list of things, people who are already in, or contacts who are already in the system, you're potentially exposing your contacts to the public, uh, which would obviously be pretty terrible idea. Um, so we're going to change that. So you've got these different options. So I've gone on, I've gone into web form components and I'm, I'm editing the existing contact options. Um, so I'll, so I'll say for now it's a select list. But there are things you can do like uh, you could restrict it so when the people do the lookup, it only shows you a certain um, a certain group. So, it's, so, it's, so you, you know you've got like your safe group of organisations. You could say this lookup is is restricted to this one. How many of time? How many of time? <coughs> yeah, oh, good. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. I know. Okay. So if I change that now. Uh, 
you'll see now that I've, ch I've changed that to just expose just these organizations and I would choose which one it was. Or you can have ones where you start to type it in and it pre-fills, or you can just have a set group. There's, there's quite a few different options. Can you restrict your relations? Yeah, you can, yeah. So if someone's logged in, you can say, I want this one to pre-fill with this person's existing employer. Yeah. You can do things like that, yeah. It takes a bit of messing around, but in my experience, if whatever you think, you know, if you want it to do something al along those lines, it's quite complicated or pre-fill in a certain way or only, um, you know, act in a safe way, it is possible. But that's where sometimes where it takes quite a lot of time to get exactly the right options in place. Um, okay. So that form I've created, that will act just like the other Drupal web forms. You can still send something to a staff member, you can still um, send a nice receipt to the person. This time though, it's, it's interacting with the CRM. And we've got all sorts of other options, like I could, if I go to contact two, I can say contact two is the employer of contact one. Exactly, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. So, so this, this is time-saving, isn't it? So you, in the CRM, it's creating the right data and in a way that you, you want it to be created. It's, a lot, it's stopping human error as well. Can you also then add family members? You could, yeah, because you can have lots of contact. You can have loads of individual contacts. Yeah, you, they could choose from which relationships, or you could preset them like that. Right, I'm going to hand you over to Andrew now. Uh, okay, do you, want to, do you want to swap this microphone? Yeah, hiya. I have a question like operation. Can it be also like multiplying or dividing one field before it's been um, yeah. Once it's, been, once it's been put in the form and say it's yeah, saving it in a certain way. For example, for a member, you put the membership fee for a month, and, but I need it in CBCRM in one the whole year, so it's multiplied by 12. Does it? Or is it not? Uh, um, it's possible. Probably not through the things I've, I've shown you there. I don't think. <coughs> Do it. Yeah. Swap. Yeah. Um, if you've got any questions, just shout out grab my attention. Two main reasons we use web forms rather than just your CV profiles is conditionals and multiple contacts. So this is one of our new, new forms, it's not live yet. And start with a basic conditional, a cosmetic one. As you can see the top one, this is within the form now, the green bit is the form, the web form. The top one is a com cosmetic conditional. So I'm tallying the web form that if this user selects rewards in the select options field, I want this to appear. So if we go behind the scenes, I'll quickly show you how that's done. At the top of the form, you can see three markups, and that is where I've placed the pictures and the text. And then below that, I've got a radio button uh, that's the select options, but using radio buttons. And that is the, the three options I could choose from. So if we click on conditionals, you can see the top, top one says if Y join, so that was the select options, the radio buttons, is about us, then about us is shown. And that was one of the markups. So that's a very simple one. And you do that for all three. So if Y join is our promise, then our promise is shown. And if you do it for every single one, then the, the form will start with nothing appearing. Um, but in this one, I've defaulted the start to about us. So that's defaulted to that appears. So that's a, that's a basic one. A more advanced um, 
So this is a membership form, and I've hidden a lot of the form. So a more advanced version of that is we've got two memberships, eco member and member. So members receive printed documents, so we don't want anyone living outside the United Kingdom to be able to select membership because we don't want we want them to have the eco membership option only. So looking at it from the user perspective, if, if I'm from the uh, United Arab Emirates, I'll select that and what you can see is the membership options is hidden and it's behind the scenes it's already selected eco member. So that's more of a complicated version but it's the same premise. Um, so if go behind the scenes, and if I'm going too fast, let me know. But what I've basically said is, um, let's find it. Um, okay, there's quite a lot here. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Here's a good example, right? So this is more of a complex condition. Looking at this one here, um, okay, this one. This is saying if membership type is eco member and how you would like to pay is one year, one thing, that's one option, or if select location is not United Kingdom and how would you like to pay is one year. So either of those options, what is happening then is the choose membership fee is shown so certain things are happening so in terms of it's not the United Kingdom and they've selected one year payment then that is saying we're going to automatically set membership type to 16 and 16 is eco membership uh, that's essentially what's happening behind the scenes let's go back to the United Kingdom so I've now selected the United Kingdom um, one year, I'm going to select eco member, and I, as you can see, membership fees appear. If I select member, different membership fees appear, and that's a conditional. That's saying if these, if one year and membership is selected, then I want these fees to appear. So to do that, if I go back to form components, I've got. For these are web forms, so this is this these this isn't within C, CV CRM. These are four web form um, fields. Choose membership fee, and each membership fee represents a different option for a type of membership. So this is what I'm making appear based on certain criteria. The reason this one is so complex is if, you, if I, this is how the public sees a form, and if I log in as an admin. This is how I'm seeing the form. And it's got two new fields there. So they're hidden to the public. So what I'm doing now is I'll do it again from an admin perspective and you can see what's happening within the form. So I'm selecting United Kingdom. I'm selecting, I want to be a life member this time. And I want to be an eco member. You can see the membership type's been set behind the scenes and I want to select £350 and that's gone into the membership fee. So that's happening behind the scenes, they can't see that. If I select £400 then £400 gone into membership fee. And this is what's going to come up at the end when they're pay under payment. So this is all using conditional values. If I, I'll show you a more simpler version. At the end of the form we're going to add, I want to add household members. So now I want one additional household member. So this is where multiple contacts comes into it. So I've selected one and this these new fields have appeared. It connects them by relationship, doesn't it? Uh, not, not this one. Uh, oh, they, are, they will become because we're creating new data. Um, I'll show you that in a second. I'll just show you how the, the conditionals work there. I've got a field um, here. So this is a, I've created this field, it's select, it's a uh, select options field and that's what you're seeing. So in this field 
I've got the options here. So I've typed in each individual option. And now, uh, behind the scenes, in conditionals, <coughs> this is the conditionals for it. So it's a bit, bit complicated, but what, what, it's, what it's basically saying is, if either one, two, or three, or four has been selected, so this is the top, then all these fields appear, and they are the CIVI CRM fields for that additional member. Um, so that's, I'll quickly create that. Add new condition. And then it's here. So you're basically selecting the select field, and then you're saying, if they select one additional household member, click on the plus button to give another condition, and then you can select or, or they select two household members, and then the additional contact is shown, and that's here, additional one is shown. So one, two, three, or four, the additional one is shown, and then it'll be two, three, or four is selected, additional two is shown, and so on, so on. So in, CVC, in the um, CVC CRM part, I've selected five contacts, first being the primary member, and then the, the other four are additional members. So that is the primary contact adding additional contacts and they're linked together through the relationship field at the bottom. So these are, this, this first one, child household member one of primary member. Second will be child household member two of primary member. So in CIVI CRM, they'll be in the relationship tab, they'll all be listed. This is a membership form, so for the primary member, I've selected one member and their membership type is user select so the primary member can select their own type of membership. So they're selecting their own type of membership. The membership fee button is ticked so they're going to select, you can edit the prices and they'll select their own price as well. But for all the additional members, I want them to only become an additional member and not have a choice. So I've selected additional member so when they fill out those additional members and you submit the form, that's only one thing's going to happen and they're, they're going to become additional members, whereas the primary can become whatever they want to be. Um, the one other thing I need to show you is I've added payments. So the contribution, this is linked to um, CIVI CRM through the yeah. contribution page, isn't it? Yeah. So so CVCRM has this idea of a contribution page where you can, you know what they normally use to take a donation or create a membership. Um, the web form CVCRM integration uses sort of right, right off the back of a contribution page. So in the contribution page in CVCRM you're saying how, what, how the payments will be taken. That then feeds into here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> So are we going through contribution page? You think? No, no. It's it's linked through. Is you're basically creating a blank contribution page, and that means you can do whatever you want with it. And here we use PayPal standard, and that's selected through the contribution page. Obviously, this is very complicated, and I rush through it. But I'm just showing what is, what potentially you could do with web forms, and all these things that I've gone through, you just can't do with CIVI CRM profiles. So it's, it's hiding fields, it's telling what fields should be, using conditional values, and then using multiple contacts. Yeah. The, the, the reason I asked Andy to help me is because his, your, his particular example is extremely complicated, but it does give you a good idea of, like I said, of, of what is possible. You know, I've been doing this, this work for a number of years, and uh, yours, his, yours is the most extreme use case I've come across. Um, <laughs> but before you had like 
I can't remember, it was a, before it was a large number of forms and you've re, you reduced it to one form, yeah. haven't you? That's yeah. the point in some ways. Yeah. Simple question. So how do you, um, or can you integrate these forms with um, basic user creation? You know? Right, so right. So if you use, if you use profiles in yeah. CBCRM, yeah, that, at that point you can create, you can say I want this profile to create a user. In Drupal. Yeah, in Drupal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't really work in web form. So, but we can, you can do it in a way, you can use uh, rules, something, another module called rules to say when this thing has happened, I want you to create a new user. Yeah. Hi. So this is, because that's pretty much the question I was going to okay. ask. You could have a password field in here that you could then use rules to pass back uh, to, because that doesn't feel, as long as that's not. Yeah, right. As long as that's not happening by the scenes. Yeah, like yeah. Like back in that's user okay, but because um, that's what we are trying to do is we have a membership form like this but the process we would love would be for someone to fill out this form mm. the money, and then be logged in to the membership area yeah. <coughs> yeah. With, with all the details I, yeah. I think I think what I'd be tempted to do there is maybe use two forms but they wouldn't know they're using two forms mm. you could you could make it so they fill in say a web form and it pushes them onto next page to actually takes them to a profile page or something, you know, you could do a combination maybe there. That. that might not be ideal, but that's the kind of things we would do, we would, might do. Yeah. I have one more question. Which yeah. Is, um, the, the payment, so uh, we've used uh, Drupal web forms a bit uh, with Sinsera, and it's great for everything up to money. I, I really like what you've done here, and you, you have lots of options around uh, mm. how much someone pays, but actually just one one view for the city CRM uh, kind of payment. Yeah. Um, does it, what kind of payment processors does it integrate well with and which ones does it not integrate well with? Right, we see, you're, 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 yeah. PayPal and yeah. things like Stripe and uh, Smart Data. Yeah, so you're using PayPal Pro. Actually, we're, um, we've just paid, we're financing v uh, Vida to do a smart debit integration into web forms. Really? Yeah, that's, so that's, that's exactly what we use. And right. It doesn't. It's, it's the only, the kind of the only missing link that mm. we are currently using uh, out of the box. Yeah. Can still be so Yeah, we and the forms because yeah, uh, and the, the the payment processor doesn't like the web yeah. forms yet. Yeah. I think it's really common problem because it's not really integrating. It's not. Really Yeah, I, th I know have improvements have been made recently. So up till a few months ago, it didn't really support say PayPal standard, but apparently that is uh, is now in there yeah. as well. Yeah, we use, use Stripe, so we <coughs> get to work successfully with Stripe for credit card payments. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we use PayPal Pro, and then uh, there's a compliance issues, so we move back to PayPal standard. That works fine. Um, and when Smart Debit's in, I think maybe a month away. Um, if you go to this section, you'll, you'll, you'll just add it into the contribution page and select user select, and then they'll be able to select what type of payment, and then from there you can tell, force it to tell it the price, change the prices, or from there using conditionals. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just very quickly. Yeah. Is the smart extension going to be open source? Yeah. 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 Maybe we should be a blog post when it comes out. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just say that again, Oliver? So maybe we'll, I was prompting Andy to say maybe we could do a blog post yes. when it comes out. That'd be useful. Hi. Uh, how about uh, the bikes, uh, status? Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> so at the moment, there isn't a port of web form to Drupal 8. Uh, it doesn't exist. This, on. Um, Drupal 8, someone has been producing something called uh, YAML form, which is since it's been getting a lot of traction. But the, we would have to redo this work again. Um, it's not clear how that's going to go. You could either read, I guess the options are add something, create, you know, create a Drupal 8 version of web form, improve the way profiles works, or do a, another thing. Something will happen, which is just not clear yet what it is. I don't think. Uh, it's only perhaps in the next few months that Drupal 8 would get to, would be getting to the point where we'd be comfortable working with it anyway. I think it's good for basic sites, but not complex complex things. I think. 
Oh, it takes a while. That takes to bed in. Okay, I've got one final thing to show you. Can we just swap for a second? Sorry. Um, so, what I didn't really show you was um, I'm on the CBCRM tab of, the, of, the, of, of the, the test form I created. I could also have clicked onto activities. So, what you could say is um, things like, when this form's completed, I want the CRM, I want this, I want this form to create in the CRM um, an activity of type inqui online inquiry then we can see how many online inquiries and that, that online inquiry will, inquiry will be set against the person who completed the form. So it's, it's very simple to do. You say I want, an, I want an activity, this is the type, who's, it, who's, who's going to be, uh, who's it going to be with, very straightforward. You could make it so if they put a notes field that note could become the details box of the activity as well. Um, we can also do event registrations. It's quite hard tying these event registrations to payment uh, and there's some complexities there. Um, and, and in theory you can also do things like where you um, could edit an existing participant as well, which is a really interesting thing because that's not something you can really do in CVCRM very easily. Um, it's quite hard work. I suppose. I hope Coleman, who writes, writes this, just doesn't watch. But. <laughs> uh, and and yes, what you were using the memberships one, weren't you, in contributions? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, and under additional options, this comes back to something we talked about before, about um, this idea of a checksum. So you can send this out. For, so you you could create this form. In CV, you could send an email or you could send a mailing to large numbers of people and you could give them a, a link to the form, but you include this extra code. And the same thing works for profiles in CVCRM as well. But this, when they click the link, it will pre-fill the form. So I get an email, I click the link, it pre-fills the form with what you already know about me. It makes it much, much easier to complete the form. It's chances of creating a duplicate uh, 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 you know, does not, it, won't, it won't create a new duplicate. Um, you've got to be careful because you've sent out a link that exposes some data. You do have to obviously be, be thinking very carefully about what you're doing there. But it's a very neat way of, of um, working with the system, especially. So where we use things like this is where, uh, and we're saying with profiles, is you know, if, you, if we start working with someone, they say we've got all this old data, we've got 50,000 contacts, and we think somebody's out of date, but we don't really know what to do, we might create a form that's got the information they want, and they send, they send, they send a, a mailing out saying, can you update your details, or something similar, and we get them to pre-fill it. So if you know a little bit, they can see a little bit. If, it, if they know loads of people, loads, it can be corrected. It's a, a nice, neat way of dealing with that information and then starting again. Trisha? Mm -hmm. That does happen, yeah. <laughs> All these things have got caveats, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we're probably out of time now. Has anyone got any more questions? No? Okay, brilliant. Oh, yes. Hiya. Um, Web form to do bulk updates. Really can do profiles. Oh, oh, you mean within CVCRM? No. Yeah. Right. no. I think you probably want to use the CVCRM entity. Yeah. yeah. That'd be better to watch. Yeah. Yeah. On this, with, with this, uh, with the checksum and uh, pass to the contact ID and send me, would that allow you to do something like one click donations whereby I send an email to you, you already have your details, you click on a link and that link is just taking yeah. you to a confirmation page yeah. to confirm the fact that you said you can donate uh, if so it's automatically filled out all the details mm. to fill. You, can, you, you could dress it up like that I think, yeah. 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 You have yeah. to make the fields private with you because 
there's another feature where instead of hiding the field, <coughs> you tick the box as a private, and that's only um, that can only be seen by admins. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's hidden. And what that means, you can do, you can manipulate that field. So they'll log in. If it's a membership renewal, they'll log in, not see any fields, but they're there. They're behind the scenes and they've been populated. Uh, I think that yeah, that would work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're using from sort of fellow, if you're using the sort of you, you, you UUID web form module to try and put it in features, where well, it's store all the CV CRM settings as well. Um, so you can I'm not sure. if you use sort of features UUID web form UUID, so yeah. you can yeah, try and make these version control basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I've got a good answer to that. No. Oh. Sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, if there's no more questions, then I think uh, that's it. Yeah. Thanks very much, everybody. Yeah.